you know, we're almost to the end of the year. And I think by most accounts, even when I look back across my almost 30 years in the architecture profession, that this has been one of the most difficult years anybody can remember, not just for architects and architecture firms, but all around the world, certainly. And it reminds me, and it makes me think of the importance of setting ourselves up for success. It makes me think of what it's going to take to not only survive, but come out stronger on the other side of this crisis that we've been going through. And one of the things, one of the keys to success is for you, the architect or your architecture firm, to build a powerful brand for yourself. One that helps you stand out from your competition, one that makes your ideal clients look at you and say, yes, this is the firm that I want to talk to, that I need to talk to. This is the firm that's going to help me solve the problems that I have. That, that I have. You want to be that architect that's desired, that's pursued. Wouldn't that be great if you had the clients that you wanted to work with coming to you? Would it be great if you had the projects that you really love to work on coming to you? Wouldn't it be great if when it came time to talk about fees, that it wasn't a battle, that there wasn't this pushback about, oh my gosh, I didn't think it was going to be that expensive, or why do you charge that much? Wouldn't it be great if you had a powerful brand that worked for you. I know that's that may be a foreign concept to a lot of architects, but if we look out across the world, if we look out across the landscape of business, there are those brands out there and we can learn from those brands and we can replicate some of the things that those brands do. So I wanted to record this series of videos. There's going to be three videos. Um, how I would break down building a powerful brand for an architecture firm in three videos. And so in this first video, I'm going to start out talking about the first piece to the puzzle, which is your ideal client. I said it earlier. I don't know if you caught that or not, but I said earlier, your, your ideal client. That's one of the biggest mistakes that many firms make. They focus on their ideal project type, perhaps. Oh, well, we do uh, custom single family residential between uh, three and $5 million or something like that. Or we do fire stations or we do K-12 education, something like that. But they don't take that next step and figure out who their ideal client is, define who their ideal client is, and then really dig down and understand and develop empathy, a radical empathy for who their ideal client is. Remember, I said, wouldn't it be great if you could attract those clients that you just love to work with? So the first step, to building a powerful brand for an architecture firm. And it doesn't matter if you're a one-person firm or a 600-person firm. The first step to building that powerful brand is to understand who your ideal client really is. And when we're talking about understanding who that ideal client is. We're talking about how old they are. We're talking about uh, what type of job they have, what type of position they have, all those demographic things, certainly, but also psychographic things like what do they value? What, um, w what is driving them emotionally? Things like that. And the step that I like to put my clients through beyond coming up with a persona, beyond coming up with an avatar, that's marketing speak that you may have heard before, is to say, okay, th these, this is a description. These are the things that make up my ideal client. And by the way, I think it is also valuable to say, these are the things that I don't like in a client. So you can have a positive list and a negative list as well. But, but if you have that list, if you have that understanding, these are the things that make up my ideal client. The next thing that I want my clients to do. The next thing I want you to do is say, okay, name one real live human being that that describes. Name an ideal client from your career, from your past that fits 
that description of ideal client. And the reason that I like to do that is that I know that if you can humanize this, if you can think, you know what, uh, John, John is the, the real life human being. John's the guy that most closely fits that description that I just put together of my ideal client. So once I know that John is my ideal client, then I can start to think about things like, where is John? Where does John hang out? What does John read? What does he watch? What does he attend? What does he support? Um, things like that. If I know who John is and all those things about John, then I can start to think about finding other people like John. Now, let's take it even one step further than that. I need to know, in order to build a powerful brand, I need to know what my ideal client's problems are. What's the problem that they need to have solved? Even if someone comes to you and says, hey, I want you to design a custom home for for me, for my family. That's not the problem that they're trying to have solved. They've got another problem. We need a home that now accommodates two adults and three kids working from home and, and virtual schooling from home. Or we need a home that is a, a uh, I don't know, a, a proper a uh, place for entertaining uh, corporate clients now that uh, I've gotten this big promotion or something like that. There's, another, there's a problem. There's something else that's driving that desire for, a, uh, for that custom home. And we need to understand what those problems are, what those things that they're seeking are, because every one of your clients has a problem that they're trying to solve. They're seeking a solution which is what you provide. But what they really value is the result that comes after that home is built or after that restaurant is open or after that fire station is built, whatever it is that you're you're doing for them or you're designing for them. They really value, they place value on the result of your work. Let's be honest. Almost none of your clients has ever actually wanted really, really wanted to hire an architect. What they really wanted was a solution and a result from that solution to their problem. Almost no one wants to hire a doctor. Almost no one wants to hire an attorney, but they do want to feel better. They do want a good contract written or a good negotiation to take place. What people look for from professional services providers like architects is the result that comes from the solution that you provide. So what's the problem that your ideal client has? What's the solution that they're seeking? And what do they really, really value out of that? A twist on that, another thing to think about is, what's at stake? If you don't design, if they don't hire an architect to solve this problem, whether it's design a new firehouse or 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 a museum or a home or whatever it is, what happens? What's at stake if their problem isn't solved? If they never do the project or it's not done well, what's at stake for them? Because that's going to give you another clue towards what they really, really value. And so again, to kind of wrap things up, if you're going to build a brand, a powerful brand that attracts your ideal client, those people that you want to work with. You need to understand what it is that they're trying to accomplish. What's at stake if they don't accomplish those things? Because that's going to help you understand not only how you talk to them, how you message to them, again, marketing speak, what your website says, what your social media says, what your your proposals should say. Because you need to speak to the results that they're looking for, the things that they really value. So if you can dig in and really understand those ideal clients, you can start to build a brand around the things that matter most to those ideal clients. That's the only way, right? If you if you try to build a brand, if you try to create a website, if you try to do social media that appeals to everyone, it will appeal to no one. But if you try to build a brand that appeals specifically to your ideal client, you'll end up attracting that ideal client. So that's step number one in the process of building a powerful brand for your architecture firm, a brand that actually works 
for you. Did you ever think that you could have a brand that worked for you? You may have figured out by now that what I'm talking about is not your logo, right? It's not your colors. It's not your, your letterhead, your business cards, your website. Those are brand artifacts, but your brand is something bigger than that. It's something wider than that. There's a great quote from Jeff Bezos where he says, your brand is what other people say about you when you're not in the room. So my question to you in closing today is, what do you want your ideal clients to say about you? Do you want them to say, this is the architecture firm for this problem? Do you want them to say, this is exactly the firm that you need to hire to solve this problem and give you this result? My guess is yes, that is what you want them to say about you. So let's build a brand that's focused clearly on an understanding, an empathy, a deep empathy, radical empathy for who your ideal client is, what problem they have, the solution they're looking for, and especially the results that they value. So watch for video number two, where I'll talk about the second step. Remember, three videos on the three steps to building a powerful brand for architecture firms. Uh, that'll be coming out soon. You can check that out and figure out what step number two is. In the meantime, if you want to dive in today, if you want to start building a brand, a powerful brand that brings results, that attracts those ideal clients, those projects you want to work on, and gets you those fees that you deserve, visit entrearchitect.com slash brand course and sign up for the build your brand course where I will walk you through step by step building your unique brand that helps you stand out, helps you attract your ideal client, helps you fill your pipeline with clients and projects that you really want to and need to be working on. What better way to finish out this year and start out a new year than building a powerful brand that moves the needle, that works for your architecture firm. Visit entrearchitect.com slash brand course if you want to jump into that now. Sign up for that course. If you're not quite ready for that, look for video number two where I'll talk about the next step for building a powerful brand for your architecture firm.